This is the story of two ordinary families in a race to help save the planet. We're challenging them to change their habits. With the help of energy experts and their own personal coaches, each family is ready to go green. At the end of the three-month competition, the winning family will drive away in a brand new electric car. The families are learning to go green, but can they change their lifestyles without giving up or cracking under the pressure? Find out next on The Greenest House. It's not easy being green, or at least that's what the families in The Greenest House competition are worried about as they start the three-month journey that will take them from eco-clueless to eco-savvy. The teams are being judged in four categories. Family to family challenges, where the teams will battle head to head. Biggest overall reduction in water, energy, transportation, and waste. Building envelope leakage, also known as air sealing, and in-home challenges, where the teams will battle their own bad habits within the home. We won't know the results of most of these until the three-month competition is over. With two young children, the Edison family is concerned that going green will put a strain on their monthly budget and prove too much of a hassle to fit into their busy lives. This is my daughter Paloma, she's four years old. Uh, my wife Carrie, and she's 29 years old. 25. <laughs> this is my son Alden, he's two. How old are you? Two. He's two. <laughs> and this is Abbott, and Abbott's about six or seven. I think what green means has become a little bit um, blurred. We want to be green but we got to do in a way that's economical and that makes sense and that we don't blow if there was a budget that we didn't blow the budget um, so I think that's a huge concern. For the Falcones Mother Jaylin, Dad Mark, 14-year-old Nicholas, 9-year-old Alina, and Jaylin's father Gary, sorting through all the conflicting advice and putting it to use is their biggest concern. We've always recycled, and there's our recycle bins over there, and we have a compost bin that we sort of know how to use. Are you kidding? We don't know how to use that. Oh, we, yes, we do. I put I stuff have, in there. I have like the instructions in my... Oh. Recycling file. We okay. kind of know how to do that. And we'll start that <laughs> this coming week. <laughs> Don't talk. You're telling on us already. I think that we could go crazy just trying to wrap our brains around what going green means and how green we could go. I think most of my questions are how can I do this in reality? You know, in a way that, we'll, that we can keep it going and, and not feel like it's a total hardship. Both families have concerns about how to fit these green changes into their lives. You know, what every American wants is a list. Do these things and it's good, we're really good. If you just give us those, that list will be good and we'll do it. Since I was young, we've always heard about in the future these problems were going to arise. And, you know, those problems are here and they're now. We're just a regular old family, you know, just making ends meet, and if we can make improvements, everybody can make improvements. Bellingham, Washington is located on the shores of Puget Sound, north of Seattle, near the border with Canada. A city of about 75,000, Bellingham is a town like many others across the country. A place where people work hard and love where they live. And it's a place where more and more people want to go green, but need to save money. To help our families, we've assigned them each a coach. Ben Rupert is the coach of Team Falcone, while Kim Fidale is the coach of Team Edison. And the group is led by host and judge, Alistair Jackson. Ben Rupert specializes in energy reduction and efficiency. Kim Fidale specializes in water resources and waste recycling. And host Alistair Jackson has been on the cutting edge of green engineering and education for many years. When I was a kid, I was lucky enough to grow up in a family where I developed a really close connection to the, the world around me. I was not a very green kid at all. I ate at McDonald's, I ate at Burger King, whatever. I did a lot of things that just everybody does. And a lot of those things aren't bad, but we need to think about the implications of all of our actions. Your actions every day have an effect. It doesn't have to be expensive. There are easy things that you can do every day, simple choices. 
Even when you're in a building, you're in a home, you're in the environment. It's the way people live in those buildings, the choices they make getting to and from them, that really makes the difference. It's our planet and it gets smaller every day. There are more people, same amount of planet, and everybody needs to think about the fact that this is our home. What motivates me in the work that I do is the fact that I have two kids and their life experience is going to be based on what we can do now. Barely a mile separates the Edison and Falcone homes, but there are some big differences between the two houses. Over a century old, the Edison's home offers plenty of charm, but all that character may be hurting the environment, unless some changes are made. Would you like to come into my house? This is our living room. The most important room to the kids is obviously the TV room. It's where they, everybody ends up because there's a TV in here. <laughs> we love the kitchen because it's so big and you can fit lots of people in it. I love the floor. Todd hates it. <laughs> so I don't know at some point if we'll have to mellow it out some. And then we've got our utility room. And this is where all our water usage goes through the roof because we do so much laundry in here. This is our super efficient um, door where we ensure that no air is leaking from our house under any circumstances. This is where I go to work every day. And this is where Paloma goes to work every day in her corner. And uh, this is Todd's workstation. Carrie's workstation. So super fun. Here's our recycle bins. <laughs> this is our where we eat, but we don't ever really eat here. <laughs> this this toilet here gets about five, six gallons to a flush. So super efficient. Oh, yeah, wait, oh, yeah. drip, 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 drip. Nothing real exciting. I mean, we've got we've got baseboard heaters in here, uh, which we hate. And here's our thermostat for that. So this is bathroom number two, and you can tell it's uh, you know it is what it is. And we haven't really done anything with this room at all, <laughs> except put Alden in here. This is Paloma's room. Um, that's that. Built in 1993, the Falcone's house may be more modern, but it still poses big challenges. Hi, I'm Jalen Falcone. Welcome to my home. So this is the living room where the cat sleeps and the kids play Legos. And the table where sometimes we eat, most of the time Nicholas and his friends are playing games. This is the dishwasher that I think probably sucks gallons and gallons of water down the drain every day. And this is the TV room. And this is our favorite room because it's, it's my favorite room because it's yellow. And we have a little half bathroom down here. This washing machine, it, I think I recognize it from my childhood. <laughs> this washing machine is old. And sometimes I hear this noise that scares me and I think, oh, it's, it's dying. And I just, like, a, like it's just not going to make the next spin around. So this is the entrance to my dad's pad in the basement. We're still in the process of fixing it up. This is his, his nice big bathroom, gives him lots of space. This is a little kitchen, and over here is his soon-to-be bedroom and living room. So this is Mark and I's room. You want, we have a bathroom in here. So we have a shower, a toilet, and the bathtub in here. And this is the kid's bathroom which they never shut that. It makes me crazy, but... Hi, son. Oh, he turned his music down. This is Nicholas's room. <laughs> Look like he's... He hates me now, right now, in this very moment. <laughs> and this is Alina's room, and I think Alina's hiding. So that's our house. Thanks for coming. Bye. Next, we're talking about water with both the families. The toilets are probably 60 years old. 
I mean, that's not exaggerated. I mean, like, it was probably outhouse than our toilet. Water meters are mandatory throughout most of Washington, but there are still areas in Bellingham where homeowners pay a flat rate for the water they use. This was the case for both the Edison and Falcone home. But for the families, just getting used to the idea of being on a meter is a bigger challenge. Well, I, I just think it's amazing that we didn't have one, that we don't have one. Yeah, we didn't even know we didn't have one. So that was shocking we in just itself. Like, what do you mean there's was, no water meter? Metered. I'm a little nervous about the water meter. And I'm actually excited about it because I think we can really track our water usage. Our toilets are probably 60 years old. I mean, that's not an exaggeration. I mean, like, it was probably outhouse than our toilet. So yeah, you I flush and Lake Watcom like, goes down <laughs> a little bit. Right. And for the Falcones, there are other concerns. Teenagers. <laughs> Teenager showers. <laughs> well, contrary to everybody's beliefs, I don't use as much water as they say I do. Nicholas, do you know how long you've been in there? Uh, 20 minutes. Uh-huh. I've been starting to take shorter showers. It was only like last year that I was taking really, really long showers. Taking a closer look at the family's daily habits at home is critical. One place to start is to track the number of miles they put on their cars and where they drive. So transportation is a huge part of this challenge. Cars produce a lot of pollution, both air pollution, polluting our urban streams, and they're really expensive to drive <laughs> right now. So we want to be able to track what type of car trips you're taking, where you're going, how long the trips are. We have these vehicle logs for you. You'll be recording, obviously, the day that you do it, okay. where you started, so if it's your home, then just put your house right there, where you went, and the beginning miles on the odometer, and then when you stop, the ending miles. So we have one for each of your vehicles. Okay. Perfect. Cutting back on water means the families need to start tracking their water consumption, too. But finding out where all that H2O is going could be a little tricky. So the water consumption logs are going to go in a number of different spots. As you can see, it has a number of columns for each individual in the household. And basically, each person is going to be responsible for checking off whenever they do one of these three things. So either flush the toilet, wash their hands or brush their teeth. And then the final one that we have, again, has a column for each individual in the household. And this is going to be for, uh, for the kitchen, so it's washing dishes oh, okay. and dishwasher. Great. Every time you run it, check mark. Or hand washing, any time you hand wash, just do a check mark. Coming up, it's time for a whole home energy audit. We're searching for leaks in both homes. To create a baseline for energy use, we did a whole home energy audit at each house. The energy audit helps the coaches understand what's going right and what's going wrong in the homes. Using large fans, Robert Stockman and the team from Pinnacle Inspection measure air leakage, which is almost always the biggest energy guzzler in a house. They also record window and door sizes and types and inspect the furnace and water heater. While the blower door is operating, Robert carefully scans the homes with an infrared thermal imaging camera to actually see the air leakage. He also looks for defects in the insulation, walls, windows, doors, and electrical fixtures, where the worst problems are located. But opinions differ about what sucks up the most energy at home. The computer. Oh, the computer. Yes. Really? The computer and my radio. Yeah. <laughs> that never gets turned I don't off. Think he well, never turns off his radio. Oh, but I don't know. Well, Ever. I don't think the computer has been turned Honestly, off. Honestly, I think the water us. heater gets the most use. In the clothes dryer. True. Or the yeah, I think bullet. we have old appliances, so probably mm -hmm. that would be a good place to start. I, I don't know what the I don't know what the biggest one is, but it's got to be between water and heating. Oh, the heat, warming up the house because I don't like to be cold. Yeah. Oh, and I don't like to be cold. Once the results are in, the biggest energy monsters are found lurking in the basements of both homes. At the Edison house, the worst problem is the crawl space, and Robert takes Todd straight to the source. So, what kind of issues we have going on down here, Robert? Okay, um, well the main issue 
is this is a, a, a poor location for your furnace system or air handler. Crawl spaces are a area of big concern for me, especially back there in the corner behind. You can see lots of air gappage or right. daylight. You can see plants growing in your uh, <laughs> in the crawl space. These are not good things. The ductwork is uninsulated. It's basically the same as having your furnace sticking outside, you know, outdoors. Sometimes it's cobwebs and dust accumulation is telling us that there's air leakage there. There's visual signs. What's happening is not only air is blowing in to your crawl space, but you can have air being sucked into your ductwork system. So that's not a healthy situation. Never use duct tape on ducts, okay? Use it for whatever else you want to use it for in the world, but don't use it on ducts because it doesn't stick, it doesn't have its uh, air uh, sealing qualities that you would prefer to have on duct systems themselves. All of the water pipes, whether hot or cold, should be wrapped in the, in the foam insulation. Now, would it and help to just insulate all the way under here? I wouldn't insulate your subfloor until you get your crawl space issues totally taken care of. Okay. okay. So if we had to prioritize, mm -hmm. um, what would be the first thing that we should take care of? Get your uh, gaps in your perimeter foundation and sill areas sealed off. That's a major number one concern. Okay. Even 10% air leakage in your ductwork system can relate to a 40% energy loss okay, or increase in your energy bill. Right. So I mean just a little bit of air leakage in your ducts results in a lot of energy loss. Hmm. Over at the Falcones, the biggest energy drain is in Gary's basement apartment. The infrared camera generally can tell us a lot of uh, areas of air infiltration. By sealing off underneath the plate line here, uh -huh. or excuse me, the uh, subfloor area, all of these joints here and then down here, I see right now I can even feel a little bit of air leakage right there, oh, wow. okay? So that in itself combined with all of these areas produces a, a fair amount of overall air leakage for the total building envelope. The fan is, you know, it's the fan. Um, it's not a, an airtight fan system, but it, so you will get just constant blow uh, or air leakage through here. You also will get air infiltration. Up in here, you obviously are putting in a new door system in that, and so we've got a lot of air leakage. The Falcone's water heater also could use some attention. It's a good idea to take a five gallon bucket and with a little hose connection and drain at least five gallons out of that water heater to get rid of that sediment. Just ahead, it's the first family to family challenge. Are the teams ready? I didn't bring any snacks to come. I'm a horrible coach. Yeah, I need snacks, I need water. <laughs>
<laughs> two pounds. Three and a half. Three and a half pounds or six pounds. Gosh, I, it's going to be C or D. Let's go three and a half then. OK, we're going to go with C. And C is the correct answer. Yay! And the Edison's move ahead. Good job. Pressure's on, so, Good. Pressure's One on. point. Pressure's on, Pressure's on now. <laughs> Composting kitchen and yard waste. Oh, okay. Serves as a carbon blank. Is it source, helper, sink, or finder? Yes, we got it. Sink. You know it. It is a carbon sink. Woo! Well done, Nicholas. Very good. It's neck and neck as both teams steal the lead back and forth. With Carrie only a heartbeat away from the buzzer. <laughs> what were the answers again? <laughs> <laughs> what were the, all the options? <laughs> or D, Washington. Yep. That was a little <laughs> premature. Or D, or 40 cars. Oh, darn it. Six pounds. Or D. At the end of the day, it all comes down to one final question. 75% of the Earth's surface is covered with water. But what percentage of that is fresh water? So what oh. percentage of the 75% is fresh water? Okay. Is it A, 2.5%, B, 5.4%, C, 11.9%, or D, 24.7%? A. You are right So, the Edison family, you'll get 40 points. The Falcones get 30 points. And so you'll be ready to move on to the next layer. As we move on through the competition now, you're going to have to add five people to your team. So, oh. Okay, so think about who those team players are going to be. The Edisons may have won this challenge, but the results are controversial for both the teams and the coaches. They did such an excellent job. Carrie had cat-like reflexes on the buzzer. They got, they hit it too quickly. They got it before the question was even done. That's not fair. You didn't have a chance. Uh, I definitely learned a lot about buzzer technique. Still, both families have their eyes on the prize and know what they need to do to win. I think we're up against the challenge, so we're going to have to up our game. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yep, up our we game. were thinking two little kids, they are so going to be worse than we are, but I think maybe not. Well, like I said, once the kids pee in the car, it's ours. And I think they did that earlier. I'll lick the steering wheel. And I'll lick the steering wheel. I'm so proud of them. They're the best. Kim and the Edisons, <clears throat> nothing on us. <clears throat> like that. <clears throat> Shut them down. Next time on The Greenest House, we find out where the teams have been driving, the families get some tips on bus travel, and they get some one-on-one -on -one attention from the bike buddies.